Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well on this wonderful Mother's Day. Um, the songs I picked for this week are hymns or piano solos that my grandmothers absolutely loved. So, grandmothers are mothers to me. They help raise me. So I hope you enjoy the music and as we worship God on this Mother's Day. So, uh, like I said just a minute ago, uh, this scripture is actually the scripture prior to what we read last week. And last week, if you recall, the kind of goal or the kind of end conclusion we came to was that the way we bore fruit, the way we were able to bear fruit, or maybe the fruit we were bearing, was loving each other and treating each other with love, was to love one another. And so what we came away with was the idea that loving one another, that loving each other, that reaching out to love your neighbors and your friends and your relatives, that this was in fact bearing fruit. That this is what it was, that this is what it meant to be a Christian, to be a person who bared fruit. And now here we, we jump backwards and we sort of say, okay, well, to love one another, to love each other, to reach out, to love those that are around us, well, that is the fruit. But how do we bear that fruit? Now, I've seen lots of stuff, and I've seen lots of things on the Internet, and I hear lots of people talk about how important it is to be nice to one another, to be friendly to one another, how important it is to not to bully, how important it is to live with one another in, in tolerance, to celebrate our differences, to honor those differences to some degree. I see all sorts of stuff about that. I see all sorts of things on, on the internet and on the TV and the radio that talk about how important it is to know and to think like we don't know that person's life. We don't know what that person is dealing with. And so it encourages us to be friendly, to love one another, to reach out. Yeah. I've seen that. I know it to be true. And yet, it's difficult, isn't it? So today, I'll give you an example. I know 
that it is important to treat other people with respect, especially in places like the, uh, especially in the service industry and in retail. I know how many times people are rude to their servers and their waiters. I was a waiter 10, 12 years ago, or I guess 12 or 13 years ago, and I know how hard it is to have people who are mad at me, who are rude to me, who are mean to me, especially over things that aren't my fault. Maybe they're too cooked. Maybe it's just the maybe it's just the policy of the place. Maybe somebody's mad at me and I can't even tell why. I know how important it is. And so I try to treat people with respect. I try to treat people kindly. Now this morning, I was at Kroger. And remember, I know all these things. This morning I was at Kroger because I wanted to get some things to be prepared for Mother's Day today. And I couldn't do it yesterday because uh, yesterday we were up in Cleveland and I couldn't do it yesterday. And so today I'm there and I'm at Kroger's and one of the things I bought was a bottle of wine. And I always forget that you cannot buy wine before 10 o'clock on a Sunday. And so the, the person checking me out very nicely said, you can't do that before 10 o'clock. And of course, what time is it? 9.30. I wasn't going to drink it right then. Anyway, it was, it took everything within me not to be mad at that person. And I know I gave her a terrible look, but that's as far as it got. And I apologize for that. But the point is, I know how hard it is. I know it is not that person's fault. I know they had nothing to do with it and they can't change it. And I know that she probably gets yelled at for that very same thing a dozen times a day. And yet it took everything within me not to be one of those people. It took everything within me not to be mean to that person. And you can use the same example dozens of times and in dozens of places. Don't even get into driving a car. I know that I screw up all the time. I am not that good of a driver. I know that I pull out in front of people. I know that I cut people off. I know that I am not that good of a driver. And yet, the rage that builds up so quickly when other people do the same things I do. But the point here, or what I'm trying to bring up, is we all know how hurtful it is when people treat us meanly, when people disrespect us. We know how hurtful it is when people exclude us. We know how hurtful it is when people yell at us and scream at us, when people blame us for things that aren't our fault, or, or maybe when they overkill and it is our fault. We know how hurtful these things are. We know how hard it is. We know how tough this life is anyway. And yet, I know some of you guys are, are nicer or have this in a better way than I do, but and yet I am constantly fighting, treating people poorly. I am constantly in a battle, not wanting to be that way. And you might say, well, I'm not like that, Steve, and I say, good for you guys, but how often are you tempted, maybe not to be mean, maybe not to be angry, but definitely not to love? How often are we tempted to just leave people alone? Maybe you're not the person that walks through the grocery line and yells at them, but you're certainly not doing anything positive either. And remember, our scripture from last week tells us that the fruit of the the fruit that we are to bear is love. Not just tolerance, 
not just a lack of being angry, not just a lack of being mean, not just a lack of hurting, but a positive. A positive. A positive of loving. A positive of acting in a way that helps, in a way that builds up. Maybe you're not taking people down, but if you're not building people up, then you're not loving. And I wonder why this is. But we can see in the scripture, and we can see in the Bible why this is, because the Bible tells us all the time that we're in a battle. That we're in a battle between our physical nature and our spiritual nature. We are in a battle between the parts of us that are of this world and the parts of us that are of our Heavenly Father's kingdom. We are a people who are being sanctified. We are a people that are working towards being more like Jesus. And when you're working towards something, that means you don't have it. If you're working towards being more like Jesus, that means you're not always like Jesus. And so we know that this is true. And quite honestly, I see it as one of the major proofs of the gospel. This battle of good and evil that's within us, even when we don't want it to be. This battle of good and evil even after we've understood that it was wrong, even after we understand the truth, even after we live a life in such a way that we know it to be true, we still have this battle. I can think back on my life on all these wonderful times on which I have been loving, on which I have loved other people, in which I have reached out to others in a way that is loving, in which I have filled in, in which I have improved and worked on to build people up. And so I have proof that this is the way to be. And yet, I'm still in that battle. And so how do we love? How do we bear this proof? And so we go backwards. And we go backwards into this scripture today, and we see it in a metaphor. We see the answer to how we are to live a life that we love one another. We see the answer to that in our scripture prior, in the metaphor of the vine and the branches. And Jesus says that he is the vine, and we are the branches. He is the vine, and we are the branches. And the only way for us to bear fruit is to remain on the vine. Is to remain on the vine. And as soon as we remove ourselves, or as soon as we are removed from that vine, we cease to bear fruit. We cease to bear fruit. And we can look at this world of agriculture, and this world of farming, and I know my son Calvin just started uh, a raised bed garden. And we look at plants and how plants grow. You know, some plants grow from seeds. Some plants grow from taking part of the plant and planting it. Like a potato. You take a potato, you cut it, you put it in the ground, and it becomes a new potato. And maybe you don't want to be compared to a potato, but I think that that's how we think we are. We think that we're potatoes. I think that we think we're potatoes. We've grown, we've followed, we've become our own thing, and we can take ourselves, we can plant ourselves into the ground, and we will bear fruit, or vegetables, or starches, or whatever. <laughs> we will bear our own fruit. We will become our own plant. And so you take us off of the vine, you take us off of the plant, you can put us right back in the ground and we will grow. And so this is kind of the idea that all we need to do is learn it. 
All we need to do is practice it. All we need to do is try, and we can go somewhere else and do it ourselves. But we're not like that. We're not the potato. We're a vine. And when you separate a branch from a vine, it dies. When you separate a branch, it dies. kind of reminds me of parenting. As a parent, you try to raise your kids, to teach them, and you try to teach them and raise them up in such a way, and then as a kid, you think, I'm going to get to a point where I don't need my parents anymore. You think, I'm going to get to a point in which I can be just fine on my own. And I know a lot of us have to be on our own. But, it's not really true, is it? Is there ever a time you don't need your parent? Is there ever a time you don't need some sort of fatherly or motherly love? Is there ever a time that you don't need that? And maybe you can't get it from your mom and you can't get it from your dad. But is there ever a time you don't need fatherly advice? You don't need motherly love. You don't need somebody to treat you that way. I don't think so. I don't think so. So here we can see in the Word of God that it is important that we don't get too full of ourselves. It is important that we don't believe that the Word of God, we don't believe that the Scripture, we don't believe that the story of Christianity is one that we learn and that we go do on our own. It's this idea that if you want to remain as a person who loves, you cannot ever stray too far from the source. You can never stray too far from Jesus Christ. You can never stray too far. There is never a time in which we have become or evolved as Christians to the point where we can love other people without having Christians around us. There is never a time in which we can evolve as Christians to the point where we never need to worship, where we never need to learn, where we never need to look at the examples of others, where we never need to to go back to that well, where we never need to go back to the views, go back to the feet of Jesus. Go back to the feet of Jesus. A lot of times people talk about church, and they say that church is the way in which they get up the power to make it the whole rest of their week. They make it the power, they get up the power by which to make it the whole rest of the week. I think that's true. But imagine. Imagine if this was something that wasn't just once a week. Imagine if your relationship with Jesus was all the time, was every day, was when things were good and when things were bad. When you knew what you were doing and you didn't know what you were doing. When things were hopeful and when things were hopeless. Imagine if instead of trying to build up and spurt an amount to sort of fill up a battery, what if instead we never left that source? What if instead we were constantly in a relationship with Jesus? What if instead... We were constantly in a relationship with Jesus. What if we read our Bibles regularly? What if we worshiped regularly? What if we gave to others regularly? What if we studied regularly? What if we had fellowship with other believers regularly? What if we lived out our faith by doing good for others regularly 
What if we told people the gospel regularly? Not just in spurts, not just every once in a while, but regularly. Well, I believe that the more we do those things, that the, the more we keep doing those things, the closer we stay to the source, the easier it'll be to love. The easier it'll be to positively add to the lives of the people around us. The easier it'll be to love. The easier it'll be to bear the fruit of Jesus. Amen? Have a great week, everybody. Just a closer walk with thee, a beautiful hymn, and a nice gather arrangement.